It's 6 p.m., the end of the day in the tourist region of the Great Lakes, 50 kilometers from the town of Puerto Montt. In this peaceful area, residents suddenly hear sounds coming from underground. A mysterious rumbling rolls over the foothills of the Andes. No other warning, no other signs of alarm. Just 15 minutes after the first sounds are heard, the Calbuco volcano, dormant for four decades, sends a plume of thick smoke into the air. There was very little precursory activity at Calbuco. The Chilean Hata station close by and just one hour before the eruption, uh, they observed a signal that uh, was interpreted to detect a magma coming back through the volcano. The entire Andes mountain range is a highly active volcanic area. It's in a subduction zone where one continental plate is forced under another. Uh, when the subduction zone is going down, it goes through transformation and the, or the seawater is pressed out, will enter into the mantle and lower the solidus so the ma magma comes up. This column of ash is a result of high pressure gases trapped in the magma inside the volcano's reservoir. As the gases are forced out, they lose pressure and swell, taking with them small particles of lava. Is unusually high, rising 20 kilometers above the surface of the Earth between the troposphere and the stratosphere. If the column of ash were to collapse onto the town of Puerto Montt and its 220,000 inhabitants, the results would be devastating. You have a thrust coming up and uh, it's diluted in contact with the uh, atmosphere, so you form a kind of a, a mushroom shape on the top. And when this is no longer uh, sustainable, it will fall down, and you can form a pyroclastic flows that will fill the uh, lows, the valleys, etc., and can flow uh, very hot material and be very devastating. Fortunately, the wind from the Pacific picks up, pushing the plume to the east where the mountains are unpopulated. The ash spreads to Argentina, where the authorities are forced to close the airspace. The ash is a dire threat to aircraft engines. Very small particles, less than 10 micrometers in size, are uh, not very healthy to, uh, to uh, breathe because they, they have sharp edges and they can cut uh, a little bit of your interior. Puerto Montt is spared for the moment. As a precaution, a 20 kilometer zone around the volcano is evacuated. After a period of calm, as night falls, there is a second explosion. The eruption enters a new phase with electrostatic charges or volcanic lightning bolts exploding above Calbuco's crater. Afterwards, there were bolts of lightning. They were really low. It was an incredible cloud. We could see it in the middle of the night really close by. A cloud of sand arrived. It was very thick. We thought it was hailstones falling. Though the eruption lasts three days and nights, no human lives are lost. The surrounding countryside, however, is destroyed. 210 million cubic meters of ash smother houses, forests, rivers, and plains. Al día siguiente, 
The next day, I was one of the first to arrive in the area to see what it was like, and I found the restaurant like this, completely flattened. The entire restaurant is lost. I was born here and grew up here, and I would like to keep working here. It's just an accident of nature. It could happen here or anywhere. It's destiny. A garage collapsed, and the roof of an older house broke and twisted. We tried in vain to get fuel and food for the dogs because we didn't bring anything with us. And we only managed to get back into our house the next day to see what damage had been done. The lava ejected from the volcano caused little remaining damage within the five kilometer perimeter. The real threat came from the tons of ash that accumulated on the roofs of buildings, which could have collapsed at any moment. 6,000 people were evacuated in order to avoid the risk of being trapped. Here, there is about a meter of ash that has fallen. That's what we're trying to remove at the moment. This is also a tourist area, so there will be an economic impact. Regarding the farms, it looks like the ash will be a major problem for the livestock. You may have volcanic gases coming along if they are very rich in fluorine. And this fluorine uh, can stick to the, uh, to the uh, surface of the uh, ash grains. And if the animals eat a lot of uh, the fluorine, they will lose their teeth and their bones. But the main thing is the roofs of houses collapsing and pollution of water sources. Not a drop of drinking water remains. Ash and sulfur contaminate all the rivers. In some areas, the layer of volcanic debris is so thick that the water is no longer even visible. We have four days until Wednesday, when it is due to rain. So we need to have finished the houses that are in this state before then. Rain is not to be taken lightly in this area of Chile, where clouds loaded with water from the Pacific Ocean are blocked by the Andes and release their charge in violent storms, causing landslides of mud and ash. Several months after the events, with the benefit of hindsight, volcanologists play down the effects of the Calbuco eruption. Then there was a small eruption, well, important for those living close to the volcano, but small, uh, the volume is being estimated, maybe it's around 0.1 cubic kilometers, not much more than that, I presume. Although the Chilean volcano took no human lives, it nevertheless cost $600 million of damage.